To discuss what the future holds, uh, my colleague and I welcome from Palo Alto, California, Dejan Mio Isic. He is a distinguished technologist at Hewlett Packard Labs. Also from California, Ray Wong is the principal analyst and founder of Constellation Research. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Dejan, let me start with you. There's been lots of talk about artificial intelligence this past year, and of course we've been playing with a little bit of artificial intelligence right here in the studio. But where is this technology going? Should we be a little bit afraid of it? Um, I, I think it's a similar case when machines were first introduced, people were worried that they will take over the job from people. And they indeed took some jobs, but it was um, uh, jobs that people didn't really want to do. The same thing is here. Uh, today AI is helping, uh, for example, in video recognition, uh, voice recognition and other things. And, and, and they're even better than humans. But uh, you don't really want to go through all these millions of videos at the airport uh, as, as a human, you want to offload that. Now, uh, there are issues always, uh, like with any technology, and that's why um, regulatory compliance is really important and, and uh, ethics, and um, I think there's a lot of work in that direction. IEEE, for example, has started ethics uh, in the design uh, as, as one of the efforts. Uh, but I would focus on the positives and just make sure that uh, negatives are addressed as well. Is there a danger, uh, Dayan, that this kind of technology could be abused? Oh, obviously. Uh, I think any technology can be abused. And uh, we just need to make sure to put um, uh, some safeguards uh, that it doesn't happen. Also, uh, I think what most people are worried is that AI is competitor to humans. Um, for that reason, I think that uh, humans should always be in the loop. Uh, not for every single thing. You don't want to monitor every uh, piece of information, but uh, on the major decisions, humans should be in the loop to make sure that things don't go wrong. All right, talking about AI as it's come to be known. Alexa, do you have a question? Yes. Ray, when artificial intelligence will make me smart enough to take over Anand's job? All right, I'm not so <laughs> sure about the that. Short answer is, the short <laughs> answer is no, um, but, uh, but let's, let's, let's talk about this, right? I, I mean, I think right. what, uh, what's happening is there's stuff that is actually human-led, there's stuff that is augmented, there's stuff that is actually going to be full automation, right? And I, we need to understand, like, things that humans are really good at and machines are really good at. And I think by putting that together, this notion of augmented humanity is probably where we're going to be in the next 5, 10, maybe even 15 years, right? We're really good as humans in breaking the rules, being creative, dealing with complexity, um, having fine motor skills. Those are things we're good at. But some things we aren't very good at, which is highly repetitive tasks. We get bored. Lots of information through on us, we get overwhelmed, right? And so we got to balance that out, and that's the first part. Now, the second part that's really important is really thinking about AI ethics and their design principles. You know, and some of these design principles, the first one is trying to make the algorithms transparent so people can see what's going on, help them become explainable, um, trying to understand what factors cause certain issues. And if you've got biases, bias is not a bad thing, but unwanted biases, you want them reversible, right? You know, if you're discriminating and it's left-handed, purple-haired people, hey, we've got to definitely figure out how to fix that. Uh, and then ultimately what we're trying to do is make sure that these systems are trainable and coachable. And then the last part, which was also really important, emphasized by the, by, by the other guests as well, is the fact that if you want to actually make sure that a process starts with a human and ends with a human, if you want to make sure the machines don't take over the world. Would we ever get to a situation, Ray, where, uh, as we've been hearing from some quarters, that uh, machines would know us better than we know ourselves? I think so. I think they're studying us better than we know. They know our preferences. They might understand our patterns. Um, but we're also humans. We're very random in terms of some of our behaviors. But I think there's going to be that intimacy because they're, you know, they're going to be able to take that data, synthesize it, and understand our behaviors to predict what might be next. Right? And hopefully to prevent bad things from happening as well if we're not, you know, if we're not watching ourselves carefully. All right, Dayan, let's move on to something uh, less worrying, something billions of people use every day, and that is the cell phone. There's a technology being talked about right now called 5G, or oh, it's a speed, rather. Uh, how will that change our lives? So, uh, in my opinion, uh, 5G is uh, most important as an enabler for the low latency applications. And the opportunities there are unlimited. First come to mind, games. Uh, 
uh, today games uh, really require fat networks and uh, very powerful computers. But uh, these uh, group games uh, with very low latency will only be enabled by 5G. Uh, and that will take place uh, through help of, of the local servers, which will offload some of the um, functionality, some of the, this latency-specific uh, uh, processing. So in my mind, that's the most important one. But um, uh, beside gaming, there's uh, many other opportunities, like uh, remote uh, surgery, um, real-time control, uh, many other things. So that's, the, uh, in, in my mind, the most important aspect, this low latency. But 5G has been, um, like many other technologies, a little bit overblown. I remember two years ago, we made a uh, prediction that 5G will take over in 2017, and it was a big disappointment. Uh, so we bailed off when we were predicting it for 2018. Uh, it appears that the time is slowly coming, uh, but I, I think it's more about uh, real adoption than about the fluff. What about access to information, Dayan, uh, and the speed with which we can get it? For instance, if I'm in my car uh, driving along, I'm sitting in a traffic jam, uh, would I be able to get very quick information on what's up ahead, uh, when this could be cleared, how quickly I can get to my destination? So there are um, different aspects here. Uh, 5G is only part of it, but the whole infrastructure uh, for autonomous cars and, and assisted cars and, and even uh, without aspects of autonomous assisting is important there. And that is, how do you react with the environment? How do you react across the cars? Uh, how do you react with municipality? Because all these can help you. Uh, in many cases, it's really more local information that is critical than getting information from somewhere far away because you are at the place where you are and uh, the cars just ahead of you can help you much more than, um, than, than elsewhere. And, and I think you are right. That's where you're hinting. Uh, through 5G, you can quickly get that information through uh, the chain of communication through other cars potentially. But 5G in its own right is probably not sufficient. There is this whole other software infrastructure that is required for the specific use case that you mentioned. Right, Ray, let's look at some of the more positive uh, applications of new technology. Uh, when we look at how technology could be used, say, in things like healthcare, we're hearing about something called the Internet of Bodies. What does that mean? How will it help us? Oh, yeah, the Internet of Bodies is basically, um, we're building these sensing networks where basically everything from monitoring your heart rate to monitoring your perspiration to your actually hormone structures. Um, so we're building sensing networks inside bodies so that we can figure out what might be an attribution to a disease or attribution to a root cause of what's happening um, with a certain symptom or with a certain kind of uh, disease state. What's happening there is as we start to do that instrumentation, the self-quantification of your body, um, we're starting to learn patterns, right? Anything from circadian rhythms to hormone levels to sleep patterns, those things are actually driving our ability to think about you know, what's new, uh, what certain factors, how we're all very, very different, yet very, very the same, and how the genome actually ties back to personalized medicine. Those things are converging, uh, and, and that's actually one of those interesting areas where we're actually seeing advances, um, not only in that, but also trying to figure out where we can apply genomic techniques as opposed to traditionally uh, pharmaceutical techniques. Right, so Ray, what you're telling us there has, I guess, pretty profound implications. I mean, what about things like lifespan? Could we, could we see lifespan extended for much beyond what it is right now? We can, and there's the question of lifespan, and then there's a the question of quality of life. We could see 100-year lifespans, right? I mean, one of the biggest things in an area like Japan with an aging population is the fact that people are living 100-year lives. And what does that mean? How do you plan for that financially? How do you plan from a health perspective? Uh, what do you have to do? And so it now becomes not just about the lifespan issue, but it also becomes the quality of life. What is that going to look like uh, for a lot of individuals? That takes some of the technologies we talked about, AI and 5G, put them together. Um, you have some very interesting things, right? You know, you start to understand, hey, are, am I losing a capability or facility, right? Uh, are there certain disabilities that are encroaching on me? What can I do to augment that? Um, and then, of course, you take something like the 5G technology, put it back in, there's multiplexing, right? So the low latency is a really, really cool part, but multiplexing, the ability to do multiple services at once, um, stream multiple services to people um, at the same time, that actually gives you some opportunities to not just monitor your home, provide your biometric information, help you with a healthcare problem, and of course, you know, order an, order an on-demand movie. Right, uh, Dayan, there's, of course, another big technology talking point, autonomous cars or driverless cars. I mean, is 2019 
going to be the year we see maybe see a slight tipping point there, see more of these cars on the road? Um, I don't think it will happen in 2019 in terms of wide adoption. Uh, obviously, um, there's tremendous amount of uh, money put into it. I mean, I am shocked that almost at every point of time here in Palo Alto, I can see a couple of sometimes even three uh, Waymo vehicles who are surveying things. Uh, I believe that, as I hinted earlier, it's required a much broader infrastructure for this to take place. Uh, what I'm predicting, it will. it is inevitable it will happen. It just won't happen in 2019 because um, uh, there's a requirement for integration with municipality, with uh, the producers of the cars. There's all kinds of legal things that have to happen. Uh, selectively, it may happen in certain areas and, and probably uh, more testing will take place with the uh, driver uh, beside the car, etc. But uh, the opportunities thereof are really tremendous. Uh, that's why I'm saying it's inevitable because there'll be a lot of savings. There's opportunity for uh, preventing accidents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now there are always downsides as well. I mean, there are accidents even with the drivers, let alone without drivers, uh, in terms of unpredictable things. But as Ray was pointing out, uh, it's really this combination of many technologies, including AI. Um, uh, especially for uh, video recognition in terms of alerts and things like that, and then low latency communication, maybe even Internet of Bodies. I mean, you won't be able to drive the car if you if you consume alcohol because the car and your body will communicate. And I mean, that won't happen next year, but I think in the long term, there are uh, many opportunities. Okay, and that's where we have to leave it. That's it for this edition of The Heat. Alexa, can you do the honors? The conversation continues online. Chat with us about this or any other show on Twitter. We're at CGTN America. Thank you. Or you can visit us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash CGTN America. I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for being with us.